So version 7 has some new rendering features built into it, um, and it's based on Cycles, which is an open source rendering engine, and it basically has replaced um, Rhino's original legacy renderer, which if you look up here, is still an option. So we've got Rhino Render, which is the new one built on Cycles, and we've got Legacy Rhino Render, which is the old one. Um, eventually, this is probably going to go away, and we're just going to stick with calling it Rhino Render, which is going to be the new one based on Cycles. And the cool thing about that is, is not only does it work in ray trace mode, if I have this model um, all textured up already, and this is using some of the new PBR materials, which you can see in a different video, but um, this is all set up and ready to go. So I'm just going to run this in ray trace mode. And you can see that it renders right in the window. It's based on cycles. Um, it's pretty quick. It's GPU enabled. And we'll just let it roll. You can see the, the sample count down here in the bottom right hand corner. And the time over here, you can see that it's set up on cycles. And uh, it's pretty much what you see is what you get. If you make a modification in the window, if I move it and change the change the viewport, or if I change a material color or something like that, it all happens right in the window. So if I were to come here and say, for instance, change the color of this um, from one thing to another, you'd see it actually happen right in the window. So I'm going to go ahead and let that res up. And you can see the rendering's finished here at 1,000 samples. It took just under a minute at 58 seconds on my machine and ends up with a very nice ray traced image. Now, if I wanted to save this, I'd simply come over here and I'd use the capture viewport to file or capture viewport to clipboard. So let's go ahead and capture that to a file. And it gives you some options when the dialog box pops open. You can see that we have the number of passes matches our rendering output, the scale, gives us a 752 by 387 image. Now, if I were to double this, it would double both of these pixel sizes, but it would also re-render. So you can scale this up. If you're happy with the preview image, you can scale it up right from here, hit OK, and just wait for it to process, but it is an instant. So if I just go ahead and hit Save now, this is going to just go quickly. It's going to give me a file browser, and I'm going to say and the image is then saved. Now, if you're happy with that, that's great. If you need more control, we also provide a standalone renderer that's also based on cycles, which is the new Rhino render, which is under here under the render button. And that opens up a whole multitude of, of other options here. We've got some quality settings here, which are, uh, there's four quality settings here that um, set your bounces and your transparencies and all sorts of stuff like that. And, and in ascending levels of, of time costs, so low quality is going to go quickly, final quality is going to take much longer. And what that's doing is it's giving you presets for what uh, is happening behind the scenes, which if we go up here to Tools, Options, Cycles, it's changing all of these settings in here. So if you need to get down into the weeds, you can change things like the ray trace bounces, the diffuse, the glossy, the transmission, the transparency bounces. Say, for instance, if you had a scene that had a lot of transparency stuff, like a set of wine glasses, and you needed it to, to penetrate through all four surfaces of a wine glass, you could you know, change this to 20 bounces or whatever, and that would give you enough bounces to get a good, uh, a good quality uh, glass rendering. Um, it's also CUDA enabled. I can either set it to use my CPU or I can set it to use my GPU. And in this case, I have a very good GPU with a lot of CUDA cores. So I want that to be CUDA enabled. And so you can go in and actually manually set this stuff, or you can just go ahead and use the drop downs here. And in this case, I'm just going to go for good. That's going to that's gonna work fine for this demo. And then I'm going to go ahead and just hit the render button. It's going to bring up a standalone rendering window. I can resize it, move it around, do whatever I want to. And you can see down here the sample count and the time. Now, because there's a little bit more control in this window, the time on this is going to take just a little bit longer than, than the original uh, ray trace in the window. But we'll see uh, what it compares. It should be close. 
but it does have uh, a few other options that are built into this standalone, so it's just a little bit slower than ray trace mode. So the rendering's finished now. You can see that this one went to 500 samples. The ray trace, win the ray trace mode window went to 1,000 samples. And we're at a minute 21, whereas the ray trace mode was uh, about 58 seconds. And so um, the, the question is then, what, what do I get for that extra cost and that extra, that extra time expense? Well, what you get are the addition of these post effects. And say, for instance, we really wanted to light up the end of this thing. I can go in here and I can add some glow. I can pick what color I want the glow to be. And I want it to be in this yellow range. Say OK. And then I'm going to change my sensitivity to about 0.25 and then turn it on. And you can see that it renders the effect on there. In fact, we can up the gain here to make it really pretty obvious and it calculates pretty quickly and you can see that it lights up this entire thing now at a gain of five it's really blowing out the end of this maybe we can adjust it by making a smaller glow and in that case we get a really bright glow that's focused right down on the end of this we can add an additional effect like glare and you can see that what it does is it it goes through and it actually blows out the highlight sides and the gain on this is probably really high, so if we take, take, take this down to like 0.15, you can see that we get a little bit of the effect, but not crazy. Maybe we even drop the glare size a little bit. And it gives you this additional control to be able to process the image. Now, the thing that I find the most useful in the standalone is this gamma adjustment, because what this does is this saves you a trip into Photoshop, because you can just adjust your image here and, and make uh, tonal adjustments and stuff that really kind of enhance the image without a trip into Photoshop. So you can see I can crank the gamma on this and really get a dark kind of saturated image if I want. Or I can go into the tonal side and the tonal editing over here and I can edit the black and white point. I can make this brighter or darker off the white point. Probably want to go a little brighter on the whites, maybe a little darker on the blacks and I can make these adjustments right in the rendering window. When I'm happy with it, I can go ahead and just save it out. And that gives me my final image. So this is the standalone render in version 7, work in progress, based on cycles. Give it a shot. Let us know what you think. Thanks.